All right, thanks, uh, Caden, and uh, thank you for uh, everybody on this call. Pretty impressive that uh, on the last night of this call, there's still over 50 participants, with just about 50 participants. So um, kudos to all the students looking for a position. I've met uh, many of you uh, on this call, and uh, you know, and I'll uh, just sort of echo a little bit of what, what Western said. There, there really isn't a bad program in this country, and I think you, you do need to really think about um, where it is you want to be, where you want to end up, and what is it uh, that makes you a good fit for the program and what is it that uh, um, the program is a good fit for you. So uh, there's a lot to, to go into it. And, uh, you know, again, just the fact that you're on this call uh, means you're certainly taking this seriously. And I, I agree, this is something that's going to be, uh, you know, essentially going to be potentially your life uh, decision for going forward. So you want to make the right one. Um, so I am not going to chat too much because I have a couple of terrific residents uh, eager to uh, um, tell you all about Smith Master and everything that we have to offer. Uh, and so um, I have Caitlin and Lauren. I don't believe anybody else from Mac is here, um, but they are, Caitlin's going to do a little uh, chat and then I'll we'll be online afterwards to answer any questions. So uh, Caitlin, take it away. So why Mac Ortho? We uh, kind of structured it similarly to Western where we divided it up into um, why we think our program's great, why we think our community is great, and why we think our city's great. Uh, so just to start, this is a picture of all of our current residents and staff, including um, our five new staff up at the top here. Uh, so we got a big group. Um, yeah, so what is of everyone there. So going into it, um, when we talk about the program, uh, there's really like uh, like so much we could say about it. Like it's it's such an awesome time here. Um, we have a lot of great things in our program, including um, like we have a so we have a staff based system. Uh, so typically you're rotating at each site for anywhere from like one to about four months. Um, we try and get um, continuity whenever we can. So sometimes you end up with a staff for quite a few months, and that helps to build uh, like a lot of trust and a lot of rapport. And then that also leads to um, early autonomy and early operative experience. Uh, we also get a lot of that similar to Western, um, you are getting your hands dirty pretty quick uh, within like literally kind of like first few days of first year. Uh, sorry. Um, you are uh, in the trauma room doing hip fractures, helping with rests, as well as like a knees and hips. So we get to do a lot of operative experience as well. Um, by the time you're kind of at the end of your first year, second year, a lot of the time, once you have built that rapport, uh, you're working as a primary staff with the surgeon, kind of just making sure that you're doing everything correctly and helping you along the way. So was, that's been really awesome. It uh, builds a lot of confidence in the OR uh, quite quickly. Um, so what you could one second, Caitlin, sorry. I just want to comment on that because I think that's quite a different thing about our program in particular, because a lot of other programs from my understanding are more so going to be, you're joining like a group, you're kind of on your arthroplasty rotation, all the residents are assigned to that arthroplasty rotation and are working together in that sense. But we're a little unique where we're literally just assigned to one or two staff. Um, and as Caitlin was saying, I think it really helps build a level of trust where maybe you're with that same staff for sort of anywhere from one to three blocks, but preferably usually on the three block side. So, I, you know, it's quite shocking. Like that was why I ended up choosing Mac was because for sure, early operating exposure tends to go hand in hand with that. Um, I remember I was reaming acetabulums as a PGY-1 a couple months into, med into my residency, which was kind of crazy. Um, but it's because you're able to have that close personal relationship with staff here. So I think that's a huge sort of benefit to our program. Sorry, I'll let you keep going. No, thanks. That's a jump in whenever, honestly. Um, yeah, I agree. It's I don't think having like the service based um, system versus the staff base was something that like, you know, I really realized like the depths of how beneficial it can be like as a med student applying, but now being in the program, um, especially like I've been at Joe's for the past like two, three months with Dr. Valente. And I think like, like I've seen like, like so much growth and confidence like, going into the OR and doing certain procedures. So that's, yeah, been super awesome. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Okay, so what you can expect. So yeah, we're, we're a very close group. We do a lot of things together. Uh, we have a lot of cool events um, and a lot of cool educational opportunities. Uh, so here up in the top left, so we have, these are um, our PGI1s here, um, as well as Dr. Singh and Dr. Yan, myself, and one of the other R2s, Praksha, um, at the boot camp uh, for the ortho residents. Um, so we implemented that last year, and uh, it went very well, and we're working on expanding it and um, implement, implementing some other things into it as well this year. 
Uh, so looking forward to getting that going more as well. Uh, we also have here, uh, so in this, in the photo in the middle and kind of in the middle here and at the bottom, um, we have some of our staff doing uh, like simulations for near near arthroscopy, uh, as well as some like cadaver labs. So we get uh, these awesome opportunities where uh, different companies come in. Uh, we get to practice doing scopes or um, dissecting cadavers. Uh, so that's yeah, it's awesome. It makes like such a difference going in uh, to the OR as well. Uh, we have some world-renowned faculty, so some big big names here. We got Dr. Ianni on the on the left. Dr. Mo Bandari in the middle, uh, Dr. Khan, Dr. Dilly Wanmaker here, and Dr. Gert. And that's just to name a few. Like we have a bunch of awesome staff here who uh, are big names in their subspecialties and are like have done a lot of cool things and continue to do um, a lot of cool things within their subspecialty and within our program as well. Uh, yeah. As I said, I can't, can't speak enough uh, about how, how amazing our staff is. Um, you really get to notice when you are having that uh, longevity with them on your rotations. Um, each, you can learn like something so different from each of them. And yeah, we're really grateful to be able to work with all the amazing staff we have. Um, so yeah, it's very much a resident uh, focused program. So they get you involved in leadership pretty much at every level. Uh, even from PGY1, you have opportunities to start getting on um, like admissions boards or uh, getting part of different committees uh, and start to have a say and make a difference in uh, like the shape and structure of the residency program. Uh, we have a lot of flexible learning paths. So if you want to do a master's that's available. Um, uh, yeah, faculty is receptive to new ideas. So we'll talk about a little bit about that uh, in the next slide. And then we also have a lot of teaching as well. So in addition to um, like the, the labs or the sessions that we have, we also have a high yield uh, morning teaching at most sites. Uh, it's about two or three times a week, uh, depending on where you're at. And then we also have weekly grand rounds um, with uh, speakers every Wednesday morning. And that's our uh, protected half day as well. Uh, so usually we have grand rounds in the morning and then um, either like lectures or senior sessions um, up until about noon and then we usually head to the hospital. Um, so speaking of like it uh, being faculty being receptive, um, so there's quite a few women in our program. We have about eight female residents right now. So roughly half of our residents are female. Um, we were really wanting to get some female keynote speakers coming in. Um, and Dr. Kana, Dr. Annie, a couple other folks made that happen. Uh, so yesterday uh, we had Dr. Laura Slayman. Um, she's an arthroplasty surgeon out in Chicago, came and spoke uh, to us at our division day. Uh, she talked and then, yeah, she talked to the whole group and then we had like a little women's lunch, uh, talked about uh, like career goals and uh, kind of how to accomplish those. And it was really awesome. Uh, so it's something that the, that the staff listened to that we, that we wanted and uh, yeah, made it happen. And then we're already in the works uh, for setting up more things in the future. So it's been an awesome addition too. Uh, so to go into teaching, so I just uh, attached some of the screenshots up at the top of our different like academic half day schedules. Um, so we will have different topics usually starting around 7.15 or 7.30 in the morning. Uh, sometimes they're over Zoom, sometimes they're in person, just depends on the on the week. Um, but yeah, we learn about cool, cool things like atypical femur fractures, uh, ankle fractures from Dr. Petrosaur, which is always good. And then we... Um, oops, we have uh, visiting um, professors as well. We recently had um, uh, Dr. Ole Antonishin from Ukraine, who is working out in Ukraine, um, kind of in the active war zone, come and talk about that, uh, which was uh, really interesting uh, to see. And it also provides us with um, like connections overseas and good opportunities uh, if we were looking to do some more outreach work as well. Uh, I attached just a um, kind of like a weekly teaching schedule that we have here at uh, St. Joe's right now. So every Monday we're doing trauma rounds. Uh, every Tuesday we're doing like upper extremity rounds, usually prepared by like a resident or a fellow and then moderated by the upper extremity staff we have here. Um, and then we'll have chief rounds. So whatever the chief wants to teach, uh, they usually teach on that day. And then we have our arthroplasty rounds uh, with um, some staff on Fridays. So we have a lot of teaching every day, which is really awesome. Um, you really, yeah, really you, when you're on the rotation for, uh, more than a block, you you know that uh, you really start to build on all of your knowledge, both in the OR and then as well as just like on paper, 
Uh, so those are great as well. Yeah, I touch on that too. Just I find teaching is important because honestly, as anyone, when you become a resident, obviously it's exhausting, um, and it's hard kind of at the end of the day to go home and want to try and study. So it's nice to have this built-in teaching every morning, so that you know that you're always walking away with something from a given day, um, even if it's on a topic. Like a lot of times I'm presently chiefing at the, the Hamilton General, which is our level one trauma center. I try and pick out topics um, for my chief rounds that I find are things that maybe we, for whatever reason someone hasn't seen or I saw that someone was kind of struggling with when we were talking about it um, in our handover. And it's just a really good opportunity to make sure, you know, you walk away that day being like, oh, OK, well, maybe I haven't seen that case before, but now I kind of know a little bit about it, can answer some questions on it. So I think our teaching is very strong. Um, and like Caitlin was saying, it's kind of different at every site. There's a different sort of day dedicated to a different subspecialty. And our staff are very much involved. They're there, whether it's on Zoom or in person. Um, and you usually have multiple staff coming out every morning, which is great um, because you get both kind of their expertise as well as the expertise of senior residents. So it's um, probably one of the, I think, one of the strengths of our program, especially comparing it to sort of others or other surgical specialties who don't seem to have that going for them. Yeah, I agree. It makes a big difference. Um, here's just some photos, just like in our early operative experience. So uh, we work a lot with like both staff and fellows. Um, and then, yeah, same thing with Western. We kind of coordinate uh, who's taking cases, um, but usually it's a uh, up to the resident um, and the fellows joining you as well. Um, don't I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Lauren. Yeah, I would say um, it's pretty nice because we have trauma rooms here, especially at the general, because <laughs> at a given time, we can have 18 cases on the board. We see a very high volume of trauma in this region. It's kind of crazy, actually. It's kind of everything after London and everything before Toronto, as well as everything in the greater Niagara region and above. Um, so it's quite crazy. We see a lot of polytraumas, which is nice because you get a lot of experience as a junior getting to do things kind of on your own with other people in the room, but not necessarily like watching your every move. So you kind of get that independence um, and kind of early exposure, making clinical decisions in the OR, which is nice. So yeah, definitely a team sport. Uh, we also, I would say we have like a pretty good work-life balance. Obviously residency is hard. We work pretty freaking hard, uh, but we also do a lot of things together and have a lot of fun. Um, just some like highlights. We have our like Thunder Mallet um, hockey game every year. Uh, we have our softball game every year. Those are like, there's always a huge uh, turnout for both staff and residents. Uh, and it's really fun to get a little competitive with everyone. Uh, so we have a photo, photos up here at the top of our um, uh, most recent softball game. Uh, staff one, but whatever, we'll leave that for another time. Um, and then some other photos down at the bottom. Um, so we have our residency retreat. So this year we rented an Airbnb kind of out in Niagara on the lake. Uh, so it was a massive Airbnb. We kind of all piled into one house and different bedrooms on couches, air mattresses, uh, and then just like spent the night hanging out um, and doing some fun activities together. Uh, then the next day we do our retreat and then again uh, had some more fun games uh, teed up. Uh, so it's a photo of everyone there. And yeah, it was, uh, it was such a good time. And um, honestly, like so awesome of the program to be able to organize something like that, where we're able to uh, basically have like an entire like day plus like a half day um, off. And at that time we get uh, calls covered by the fellows. Um, so truly like you, like once you leave on like the, the Tuesday night, um, you're kind of like, you're off work, you can just like enjoy your retreat uh, without worrying about having to go into call the next day uh, or not until 5 p.m. at least. So they, they do a lot of coverage. So it's good. Like uh, we get a full full day with each other and yeah, it's a really great time. We've done it. I've been a part of two and both have been so awesome, like really uh, like team building and just, yeah, forming a lot of like good memories at these retreats. Uh, so I put an example schedule up here. Um, this one, maybe not the most representative because we do, like we did have a little bit of uh, limited coverage here at Joe's. Usually there's more than uh, three residents, uh, but just an, an example, like of um, kind of like the structure. So right now I or I was assigned to Dr. Khan and Dr. Blente. So doing a mix uh, with them, uh, either in clinic or in the OR, in the trauma room. Uh, so it's a really good mix. Usually you'll be in the trauma room at least like once or twice a week, which is awesome. Um, so a lot of experience there and then you got a lot of good experience uh, with your staff in like the clinic as well as well as their elective ORs so we make sure that you see a variety of stuff and then in terms of call yeah obviously it depends on what site you're on but uh, usually not not too bad I don't know if you want to add to that Lauren at all uh, yeah, I'd say that's pretty representative. Usually like uh, everyone who's chiefing tries to be very fair and make sure that you get kind of 
an equitable amount in terms of like OR versus clinic. Obviously, most of us, well, I assume all of us want to be in the OR. No one really wants to be in clinic. Um, so we try and guarantee you're getting at least one to two OR days, um, usually two at least kind of a week, which is nice. Um, and it kind of lines up with the staff schedule, obviously, as well. Um, and then same with like day call. We try and make sure we spread the love. No one loves day call, but we make sure, you know, maybe you're doing once a week day call. Um, so I think everyone's really fair in our resident group when kind of doing the schedule. So yeah, I'd say this is pretty representative. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I agree. It's fair. Everyone kind of works together. And obviously, like as a senior, you want to be taking a little bit less call, but you don't see where like the juniors are getting absolutely slammed and the seniors have like no call. Uh, we definitely share the load of the work and that's, yeah, it's great. Like obviously, yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been fair. Um, okay. Yeah. So going into research. So Mac is a big, uh, big research uh, name. Uh, these are some of the projects that we have going on. Um, some of the big ones are Oreos, uh, no pain flip. Uh, we got a bunch of them here. Uh, so we just had our division day. Uh, these aren't updated. So this is from our last division day. Um, uh, but basically our no pain study uh, was recognized as being in the top 5% of all public publications in JAMA in 2022 and one of COA's most read uh, 2022 articles. So definitely uh, proud of the, all the folks who uh, took part in that um, for a parody. That was an RCT study that was done by like championed by three of our residents who have since graduated and they were able to do it within the course of their residency, which I thought was pretty impressive. So definitely something that's possible at Mac, given sort of the research power that we have. Yeah, totally. Um, and then, yeah, for the parody, uh, the 103 investigators of the trial were awarded the Kappa Delta Bond Donor Award at the 2023 annual meeting for the um, ORS, as well as the AAOS. So that was a big awesome or awesome uh, award for them to win there. And that was uh, Dr. Gert and a lot of the, uh, quite a few of the residents and faculties as well. And just highlighted the preventant trial. Um, so we enrolled over 500 patients, uh, both nationally and internationally. This is last year, so I'm sure that they have uh, surpassed that even. And, um, so this is from this year. Uh, so for um, like the 2022-2023 year, we had over 125 um, publications come out of MAC. Uh, we have over 41 ongoing trials. We received over 5.2 million in funding. And we collaborate with over 56 uh, countries, which, which is awesome. Like we're seeing um, a lot of co collaboration between different sites, uh, which is great to just provides uh, better quality research and more information for everyone. Dr. Annie's favorite uh, slide. Yeah, his favorite slide. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is something we're pretty proud of uh, too. We talked about it yesterday at Division Dinner. Um, so this year we were part, uh, Mac Ortho was um, widely represented by other faculty or trainees um, at over four to three conferences and webinars. So that's awesome. We are doing big things and as well as the program provides you a lot of opportunities if you do want to go um, out to do some of these conferences or go present, uh, you are able to get the time off to do that. So that's good. Um, and then our community. So just based, um, like one of the most important things for me going into residency was like a lot less about the location and a lot more about the program. Um, I'm originally from Vancouver and then did my medical school in Calgary. And then, um, yeah, didn't really, wasn't too fussed about location, was uh, really wanting to focus on like what program I thought like I would fit best into and like who I wanted to work with for five years. Um, so after interviewing with Mac, that was like definitely the case. Like I was just so impressed um, by like the, by like all of the faculty that interviewed me. And then it was just like a fun interview. Like it felt like uh, they really wanted to try and get to know me. And um, you can really see like the collegiality and like the closeness of our group come across uh, when we're all together. Uh, and that was like very obvious, obvious for me during the interview. And even now being um, one in a like one and a half years -ish into residency, um, still the same. Like it's such an awesome group. It's like, it's everyone, like they're more than colleagues. Like everyone is a friend and we do a lot of things outside of work together and coming from uh, like moving here and being in Hamilton, like not having any family here, like it was important to me that I was like close to the people that I'm working with. And that's definitely the case. Like I'm, yeah, couldn't be more grateful to be working with the group that I am. Uh, so these are just a bunch of photos of the different things that we do together. Like, a, like tree drop trekking, a lot of hockey, a lot of softball, um, but then uh, we have a lot of fun events as well. Uh, okay, this is my slide, but this is a, 
uh, one of our, <laughs> God, he's a fellow now out in Australia, but he was one of our PGY5s last year. Uh, so residency ages you so quickly, but a supportive community definitely helps. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, pretty much uh, very welcoming right from the get go. Uh, we always have our like kind of white coat ceremony, ceremony kind of thing or like a um, welcome event uh, for the past few, two years. We've had it um, at the Thai Cats game at the stadium. Uh, so that's been really fun to get to know all of the staff and the residents and be able to watch the game together. Uh, yeah, that was a, one of the highlights uh, when I came in. Oh, there's more, more collegiality. All right, and then the city. I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about it. I feel like I don't know too too much about the city, so Lauren will have to jump in. But um, from what I've experienced, uh, everyone from Mac always says like we have the most waterfalls per capita, which is totally true. When you go hiking, you literally always see all these cool waterfalls. So. During the summer, I definitely spent a lot of time exploring all the green space. There's a lot of place to go, places to go hiking, like Bruce Trail and a lot of like awesome other places. Um, so yeah, coming like again, coming from like BC and out west, like uh, nature and being outside, getting able, being able to hike was important to me. Um, and I've definitely found more than enough spaces to do that around Hamilton. Uh, there are a lot of cool like wineries around the Niagara on the Lake. Um, bunch of movies where were films here I didn't know this before but I was looking up some stats so like Chucky and It and The Handmaid's Tale and the boys were all filmed uh, partly in Hamilton so that's pretty cool and we're also known for very unique or unique and innovative modes of transportation uh, deemed the Hamilton Harley. <laughs> <laughs> the phenomena that I was not aware of until I got here. <laughs> It, it um, gives us half our traumas as well. No. Um, yeah, I would say I'm I'm also not from Hamilton. I'm actually from Windsor. So my family would have loved if I would have went to Western, but uh, I actually ended up choosing Hamilton um, for a number of reasons, but I would agree. Part of it was um, just some of the things I got to see from the location itself, which I was pretty shocked about. I think a lot of people like have a negative connotation when they think of Hamilton, but it actually has a lot of great things to offer that Caitlin was kind of highlighting there. Um, I would agree. The nature is one thing, like shockingly, you kind of think, oh, Hamilton's pretty big city over 500,000. And that's just like inner city. You're not even counting all the surrounding sort of, um, catchment areas. Um, and shockingly, yeah, like you can drive all of like five, 10 minutes and you're at these amazing waterfalls. Um, which for me was nice, especially during COVID time when you were no longer to go to could go to gyms, stuff like that. I started picking up things like trail running and I could find a new trail every week. Um, and that was just kind of like something I was very surprised about. Um, the other thing is, is I think Caitlin's kind of getting to it, is this catchment area that we cover. So it's over like 2.3 million people. Um, and it's sort of close to, ironically, a lot of things Western has also pointed out in their sort of thing. But for example, you know, Buffalo's not far at all. You have the whole greater Niagara region. So Caitlin and I and a few of the plastics and other ortho residents actually went and did a wine tour, um, which is very easy to do. You can drive 20 minutes and hit a bunch of wineries, or you can drive upwards of 45 minutes and hit like a million wineries um, that are all very beautiful. A lot of people go there for sort of destination weddings, um, bachelorette parties, all those kind of things, you name it. And it's kind of right in our backyard, which is nice. Um, I have arranged to go to Buffalo Bills game with my sister, which is quite easy. It's only about a little under an hour drive. I've flown out of Buffalo when I went to Mexico this year. Um, you can also fly to Toronto and Hamilton airport shockingly has a lot of, uh, great connections to a lot of places. So really easy to travel from Hamilton. Um, I'll oh, sorry, I'll let you finish the slide before I jump on further. Go ahead, Caitlin. No, that was it. That was, we were just like talking about, yeah, how we have a huge catchment. Uh, so we get to see a lot of um, cool things coming in. We have a very high volume of uh, trauma coming through our level one trauma center at the general. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, this isn't my slide. I think this is just meant to show like there's just like a lot of like growth um, uh, and different things coming in. Uh, so there's a, like, uh, from my understanding, like in the last few years, like uh, there's a lot of like new restaurants, restaurants, bars, uh, cool little shops opening around Hamilton. Um, so yeah, there's like lots of cool like breweries around or like cool little pubs to go eat at. Uh, lots of cool like vintage uh, shops for clothes or furniture that you can go to. Uh, yeah, there's like, there's so much to do around town. Like, and there's always like new things popping up um, that you can go and try out. Mm, yeah, so we have quite a few 
don't know how many is on here. Quite a few community sites. Um, so we do community electives, I think starting or three, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, yeah, we can do them uh, kind of at any of these sites over here as well as uh, there's, uh, yeah, so we have a lot of opportunity to, to go uh, more peripherally in the community. Yeah, they don't even show everything on there because there's things like Collingwood, all the stuff like that, that yeah. a lot of people have gone to, so yeah. Okay, sweet, all right. Uh, yeah, this is just some of like the popular bars, uh, places that all the residents like to go and hang out together. Um, this was recently, um, no, maybe not recent. This was uh, one of the graduation events that we had at Grain and Grit. Um, and then just in terms of upcoming sessions, so on November 23rd, uh, we have our CARMS info session held virtually. Uh, if you're interested, you can just take down the um, email right there and RSVP to Paulette. Uh, so it'll be a, a big event. We had one last year as well, a bunch of faculty and residents uh, come and we can talk um, at length about our program as well. And here are some of our socials. Um, so if you wanna take a screenshot or photo or something like that, you can um, take a look at our, our website and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, follow us.